a 45 years old male known case of ischemic cardiomyopathy with ejection fraction of 35% presented with apprehension and dizziness for 3 days he is on guideline directed medical therapy examination reveals blood pressure of 100 by 60 ecg was done here is the ecg so now there are some findings on this ecg considering the scenario and the history you should be looking for few hints in this ecg which are there so take a look at this ecg and then we will discuss after few moments okay so now what we can see on this ecg so one thing is pretty obvious he is having an irregular rhythm so if you can appreciate that in this long lead two there is obvious variation in rr interval as marked by these asterisks so there is no doubt that he is having an irregular rhythm and since there is no regular pattern in this ecg so this suggests that this is an irregularly irregular rhythm okay so that is pretty much obvious in this case so this is one of the important findings which should be taken into account in the interpretation the next most important aspect to look at is although this is an irregular irregular rhythm so we have to see the p waves whether they are present or not so what do you think are there any discernible p waves in this ecg the best leads to see the p waves are usually these long lead 2 and the lead v1 so first of all let's look at the lead v1 we can see that there are some irregular chaotic activity going on over here but p wave is not very clear over here so we cannot appreciate a well formed discrete p wave okay now let's come to long lead 2 again here we cannot see any p waves any discernible hump which might suggest that uh, there is a presence of p wave so according to these findings and these observations so there are no p waves seen at least on this ecg what that is evidence is these chaotic waves so these suggest something which i have marked for you so these are the fibrillatory waves of atrial fibrillation so this supports again the rhythm as well so this patient is having atrial fibrillation and because of that there is no p waves there are fibrillatory waves and he is having irregularly irregular rhythm so always try to see the p waves first and if you can't see the p waves then look for other evidences which includes the fibrillatory waves as in this case one thing that is pertinent to mention are the presence of u waves although they are pretty hard to identify but 
uh, there are some reasons which can be associated with the presence of u waves so we will discuss this further but always try to dig out all the findings available on the ecg so you should be having a good eye to identify all these findings so so far we have identified atrial fibrillation and the presence of u waves along with that there are some other things which includes these st segments so look at these st segments so what do you think about these st segments okay so these st segments are basically scoop shape or other names are down sloping or scallop st segment so they have their importance because sometimes st segments suggest ischemia and sometimes they refer to some other pathologies that is very important especially in this case as well so always identify st segment and see whether they are depression or not you can see the st segment is a bit of depressed so this is no doubt about it okay this is depressed and uh, because of this depression this has some significance so and it is also a bit of scoop shaped as well as seen over here as in this case now summarizing so far what we have identified so we can see an irregularly irregular rhythm we can see there are no p waves we can appreciate a fibrillatory waves we can identify an st segment that is scalloped or scooped and we can see the u waves so the next question arises what might be the cause for this so the causes possibly that can be seen in such cases are the drugs including beta blockers or other rate limiting drugs and digoxin ischemia or infarction hyperkalemia or age related degenerative cases so always remember these four causes at least when you see such rhythm so now the most important or interesting part in this case is mostly we have seen that atrial fibrillation is a faster rhythm so the rate is around 400 to 600 beats per minute okay but the ventricular rates are not that fast enough so what is happening why the fibrillatory waves are not conducting down into the ventricles so these are the causes that can be associated with this slowness of the ventricular rate so always try to find out whether it is one of these causes or not so now the question is what do you think is the most likely cause among all these causes okay well in this case the most likely underlying cause for this was digoxin because i'll give you some uh, reasons for that so don't forget that in the start we have studied that this patient is case of heart failure and he is on medical therapy for that so digoxin is one of the drugs that is mostly given by a cardiologist in heart failure patient whether the patient is in sinus or atrial fibrillation so why i have said that this patient is having digoxin so this is very important now so digoxin as you know is a drug that has many effects okay so digoxin slows the heart rate and increase the contraction so it has a role in heart failure but 
sometimes what we do is we just say that the patient is having digoxin and because of these effects he is having toxicity just like seen in the ECG but this is not always the case so I have given you two definitions one is digoxin effect and the other is digoxin toxicity so it is very critical to identify these two differences because they change the management altogether so digoxin effect means that because you are giving digoxin so it will produce definitely some effects on the conduction system so this means that the drug is working actually and it is producing its effects and that's what we need in the patient so indirectly this identifies those patients that digoxin is working and the levels are good enough to produce the effects on the ECG. So whenever you find ST depressions which are of this shape, okay, these are called scalloped, downsloping, curved or scooped. So they have a very particular kind of appearance. So when you see this type of, although you can see downsloping in ischemia as well, but this case in this case or in this picture this is more of a scallop or curved so it is more commonly seen in digoxin effects okay what else you can see you can see t wave flattening okay and you can see the shortened qr interval so these are the important effects which help you identify that the digoxin is working. So we do not need to do anything to reduce or give any medications which uh, kinds of negates the effects of digoxin like antibodies and all these things. So you should not stop digoxin. Okay. Unless you see the features of toxicity okay so the doxin toxicity these are the presentations when the patient is having the doxin toxicity so in these cases you should manage the digoxin levels okay so one thing important to note is that toxicity can present with both tachyarrhythmia as well as bradyarrhythmia. So never forget that the combination of these can be present. Like for example, atrial tachycardia with AV blocks, first degree AV block, or even a bit higher degree AV blocks as well. Slow atrial fibrillation, just like in our case, the patient was having atrial fibrillation, but the rate was slow kind of a slow heart rate so you always have to measure the digoxin levels for this regularized AF this means that it's similar to this but the difference is that the rate will be slow but it will be regular this means the patient will be having atrial fibrillation in the atria but below the node there will be a slow but regular firing of the QRS complexes and because of the automaticity mechanisms increased levels produces frequent PVCs and rarely bi-directional VTs as well. So whenever you find any of these findings, when the patient is taking, taking digoxin, you should always try to look for digoxin levels and if they are higher, then you should measure these levels as well. So in this patient, there was atrial fibrillation with a slow ventricular response and he was having digoxin effects. So this means that his digoxin levels should have been checked and definitely the managed them accordingly to the levels and so that the rate can be brought down, uh, brought up to a particular range that is acceptable. Thank you for your time.